Might I fetch you something from the barkeep? Dost, dost have thou a mug of ale for me and me mate? We're not talking about M&M's, fully loaded burgers, or moon pies. But things in the snack department weren't that bad in medieval times. Heck, you could even get takeout. So here are some medieval junk foods you won't believe existed. This is medieval times! Feeling saucy. You're very saucy. Midnight snacking and getting the munchies have always been with us, even in the Middle Ages. And some of the things our ancestors craved are pretty surprising. Sauces and condiments are a major part of our modern-day fast food experience. From Big Mac sauce to any number of restaurants' secret sauces, to the dips for our chicken tenders and nuggets. And of course, there are the four cornerstone condiments that take our hot dogs, submarine sandwiches, and hamburgers to the next level, ketchup, mustard, mayo, and relish. Unleash the condiments! The packs of takeout condiments that are common now weren't invented until the 1950s, and the mass-produced condiments inside of them didn't start until the Industrial Revolution of the 19th century. Going even further back in medieval times, one of the most widespread and one-size-fits-all solutions to the sauce struggle was known in Europe as camel sauce. Most popular from the 8th to 15th centuries, cameline sauce was common enough to be made at home as well as purchased from shops and vendors. Recipes vary, but common ingredients include vinegar, red wine, cinnamon, ginger, cloves, tree resin, and pimento. Adding pulverized leftover or stale bread gave the sauce body, and the final results were something similar to the sweetness of ketchup with the zest of barbecue and steak sauces. It's no modern miracle like Arby's horsey sauce, but it would do in a pinch. She is a saucy mama. Nice spice. Salt and pepper. Classic condiments are a surprising parallel to modern junk foods, but those other packets you find at the bottom of your fast food bag are important too. The absolutely necessary salt and pepper. As the mother and father one-two punch of spices, they add that extra flair to anything that comes through the drive through window. And though salt and pepper are commonplace now, they were a hot ticket in medieval times. While TV's Beverly Hillbillies talked about Texas oil being black gold, that term originated in the Middle Ages, when pepper was so valuable to the spice trade, it was worth as much as gold by the 16th century. I love gold! You can find it on any restaurant table in America today, but it used to be on the tables of only the richest medieval nobles. Pepper's partner in crime had its days of high demand, too. For its ability to preserve food back in the days before refrigeration, salt was extremely valuable. At the end of the 13th century, it was almost unbelievably 10 times as expensive as grain, but eventually settled down to only being twice as valuable when the 16th century rolled around. If you ask somebody to pass the salt back then, hopefully you didn't forget your wallet. Ah, so pricey! Traditional takeout. Time for some takeout! It turns out that even in the olden days, folks would rather get takeout. Grocery supplies were often bought at local markets, but just like today, the option of convenience also existed to let someone else do the cooking. As cities expanded, ready-to-eat foods became more available, both through street vendors and storefronts. Maybe the most famous hot spot was found in the British city of Bristol, where a street called Cook's Row functioned like a food court. Bristol was a bustling hub located on the Avon River and had access to a wide variety of foods and many hungry travelers willing to pay for those foods. So hungry! In times before most homes had their own built-in stoves for heating and cooking, fast food from outside the home was almost as necessary as it was convenient. Like an IHOP, there were hotcakes, waffles, and pies. The meat was rotisseried or fried, bakers sold bread and pastries, and sumptuous protein snacks included fish, geese, rabbit, and chicken. Cook shops, as they were called, were often open 24-7 and became a destination for folks from all walks of life. And different price points existed for different qualities depending on what you could afford or how hungry you were. It's not quite the medieval version of the dollar menu, but it's certainly the old-fashioned version of, can I take your order? First time here? Well, you don't need a degree in medieval studies to hit that subscribe button, so go ahead and smash it. Thanks. Best decision you've ever made.
Historic hamburgers. I can't imagine what makes them taste so good. While the invention of the American hamburger is widely disputed, it first gained national attention during the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis, Missouri. Roadside stands sold hamburgers to attendees with what the New York Tribune newspaper called the invention of a food vendor. And the rest is history. Americans love hamburgers, to the tune of 50 billion burgers being sold every single year across the country. That averages out to nearly two and a half burgers per person, which is enough for a burger at two meals or a double helping at lunch if you're really hungry. They'll try the samples and they'll love them, but they'll want more, more. In the Middle Ages, the concept of a handheld, portable, meaty munchie existed back then, too. Meat pastries and meat pies were common at cook shops and roadside vendors, serving up a hot and handheld meaty meal on the go. The actual meat pie name became commonized in Europe sometime between the 1380s and the year 1400. And instead of being fruit-filled like modern pies, they were packed with various types of meat like duck, pigeon, lamb, or beef, and flavored with spices. Not quite a hamburger and not quite a Hot Pocket, meat pies were the closest thing they had to a way back when Whopper. I'm really enjoying this authentic Australian meat pie. Sweet meat. Get in on this sweet meat. Here's a medieval snack that also involved meat, but in a very different way than meat pies did. Much like basic spices became a hit back then, good old-fashioned sugar became a mind-blowing medieval marvel when it burst onto the scene. It became much more affordable and available in England in the 12th century, and in the 13th century began to overtake honey as the sweetest European treat. In what might be considered a medieval Mars bar or Middle Ages Snickers, London sugar mills went as far as producing crystallized, snackable sugar spikes in the mid-16th century. By the end of the 16th century, Europeans were putting sugar on everything, even their vegetables and fish, up to and including cuts of meat. It's so weird. While that might seem weird at first glance, sweet and savory meat combinations are still popular today, like orange chicken, candied bacon, or even the everyday addition of a sticky sweet barbecue sauce to your burger or beef steak. The phenomenon is referred to as dynamic sensory contrast and was recently explained by a food science professor from Penn State University, wherein the combination of two opposite tastes overloads your taste buds with two very different reactions happening at the same time. Hey, maybe science in the Middle Ages wasn't so primitive after all. I'm gonna consume all of this at the same time because I am a free American. Oh, honey. Cheers. Love honey. Because sugar ended up being a little late to the party, the go-to for a sweet fix in the olden days was a very believable ingredient, honey. We might dump it liberally in our tea in this day and age, but sugar was a more expensive commodity in the Middle Ages. And as such, it wasn't available to every class of people. Commoners were left with honey as their surefire sweetener. But both honey and beeswax were important parts of the economy in the Middle Ages that didn't just apply to delicious mm. food. We don't even about honey nuts, so we're not going to give you a magazine. Beeswax was also harvested as a raw material and was used in candles, as a waterproofer, and as an insulation sealant, in medicines to make them more palpable, and as an adhesive. Between the practicality-induced demand for wax and the hunger-induced demand for honey, beekeeping became big business, and by the middle of the 11th century, places like England were booming with bees. The English county of Essex alone was a hot spot with over 600 hives to itself. Honey's usage in food was naturally most widespread in desserts, with recipes including honey-infused gingerbread, honey almond fritters, and a honey-based alcoholic beverage called mead. The Middle Ages missed out, however, since honeycomb cereal wasn't invented until 1965. Let's get her going with Big Honey Crunch! How sweet it is. We want candy! We want candy! With access to both sugar and honey, there was no shortage of options when it came to sweet and satisfying junk foods. However, both were rarely the primary ingredient and were mainly used as an additive and sweetener to enhance existing flavors and desserts. Treats in the medieval era tended to be sweetened with fruit first, in ways like baked goods and tarts or crumbles, and fritters, wafers, or jams and jellies. Nuts, spices, and butter provided the contrast to the sweetness, and some of the earliest recorded examples included the introduction of gingerbread in the 15th century and apple pies before that in the late 14th century. Pie apple. 
It's a pie apple. Even early versions of funnel cakes called crisps and mint specs have their roots traced back to medieval snacking. A popular English dish was cuscanoles, which was described as being similar to a fruit-filled ravioli. And almond milk wasn't just invented to go in our Starbucks drinks, it was popularly used in desserts of the Middle Ages, too. But unlike today, desserts weren't reserved as a sweet finish to a savory meal. Right up until things changed in the late 16th century, sweets and treats were served in between the other courses of meals as palate cleansers. That actually sounds pretty good, since it means even more sugary sweet satisfaction than usual. Life was hard in the Middle Ages, but at least they got to eat way more dessert. Real men eat dessert first! Dessert first! Custard for kings. Keep your fingers and custard. We've seen quite a few ways to get your sugar fix in the early days, but back then, unlike today, if you wanted something truly top shelf, it was reserved for the rich folks. Today, anybody can pop into 7-Eleven for a Slurpee, any bodega for a candy bar, DQ for something chill, or zip out for a custard-filled Boston cream donut from Dunkin'. Custard in the Middle Ages, however, wasn't as simple to get as stopping somewhere on your way to work. Custard is a trailblazer when it comes to desserts. It was one of the first ever invented in the Middle Ages and was one of the most popular desserts of its time. That is, if you could afford it, since it was typically reserved for the wealthy upper class and royalty. Star Fleet Royalty. Written recipes for it have been found dating as far back as the 14th century, and much like sugar and honey of the day, custard was versatile in its use. In addition to dessert, it was also used on, in, and around fruit, fish, and meats as a flavor enhancer. By the time the Middle Ages reached the 17th century, custards had grown so popular that they had become a hit beyond European countries, reaching even into Asian culture as well. We knew the Boston Cream Donut was filled with custard, but who knew it was packed full of history, too? Ancient history! Ancient history! Picking up pickles. I'm not a snake! I'm a pickle! I'm a pickle! Whoa. The Middle Ages were a long time ago, so it's hard to imagine anything being old by the time the medieval days came around. In the case of this snack, though, it goes back even further. Pickling has been around for some 4,000 years, so it was already old hat to medieval folks. Still, it made for a popular and readily available food at the time. With no refrigeration, pickling was the ultimate method for keeping the food shelf-stable and snackable all year long. Pickle carrot tomato, pickle carrot tomato. And certain pickled foods were favorites. Fish, eggs, fruit, and veggies were a big hit, but the practicality of pickles might be their most enduring legacy. In the 15th century, explorers and sailors far from home suffered from vitamin C deficiency called scurvy, and shelf stable pickles provided enough of the needed vitamin C to keep trade and exploration going, and the Middle Ages moving forward. So the next time you reach for a crunchy pickle, know that it's a part of Middle Ages history. Ah! Ooh, pickles. As we near the end of our trip back in time, hit that like button, because we've got a food that doesn't quite make the cut, since even back in the olden days, it would come but once a year. Hundreds of years before Charles Dickens published A Christmas Carol, hungry folks in the winter throes of the Middle Ages still asked passersby if it was Christmas Day, since, just like today, Christmas meant no shortage of delicious food. Dinner looked different back then, though, since turkeys were late to the holiday feast. It wasn't until the 16th century that Spanish traders brought turkey overseas from the Americas to be enjoyed on the Asian and European continents. Up to that point, it was a variety of other birds like goose, woodcock, swan, or peacock as the centerpiece of holiday dinner. Holiday ham was still around, but it was medieval wild boar instead of the pork we're familiar with today. We're unsure, however, if folks in the Middle Ages left out milk and cookies for Santa. Should we put out cookies and milk for Santa? It's Miller time. Hello. Yeah, we should get some roll beers. Whether your snack was sweet, salty, or savory, the best part of a meal might be the cold, refreshing drink you wash it down with. Even without takeout pizza or buffalo wings to enjoy them with, the Middle Ages had its share of bubbly adult beverages to partake in. We already mentioned the honey-based mead, but beers and ales were also prevalent at the time. But there were no mass-producing factories back then, and no craft IPAs. 
So all three, mead, ale, and beer, required time, effort, and expertise to create. We're gonna grab as many beers as we can and then we're gonna jump. Like most middle-aged recipes, the drinks were simple. While mead is simply fermented honey, water, and spices, ale and beer are quite similar, except beer adds hops, yeast, and grain to the fermentation concoction. Ale was the champion of the three, consumed even during Lent and even at breakfast. The old saying goes, it's always five o'clock somewhere. And that seems true even back in medieval times. Ooh, couple Charles Bukowskis. Couple of Bruce Doyevskis. Stick around, leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and tap or click on another great video.